Hey, it's training day here at McAllister. Yay, training day. So you can't make it fun. We're going to try our best to keep us entertaining, short, sweet, and simple. Um, but the idea of the video here, it's uh, basically a painter. He's a new hire. My name is John. Um, I want to drag you along with, and with the camera to show you what I show a new hire, what we expect, what we like to see, and a process and how to do a check-in. The thing I'm probably going to drill home the most is basically being efficient or effective. We're going to basically just do a one loop around the machine visual inspection, checking all the important components that need to be inspected before we put our butts in the air and operate this thing. So keep in mind, we aren't hunting stuff because we have no intentions on actually operating from the platform, but basically this is a pre-operational visual check. So we're out of the machine. This is a 600 that we're going to be using. Um, this is our normal check-in. It sits on the off the check-in like this in the air typically, which is perfect. So we're going to walk up to the machine, start here at the rear, and work our way all the way around. And as we come up this way, what we're going to look for, um, of course, this is the frame of the machine. While it's in the air, it's already up. So it's one, the one less move we have to do. Look at that cylinder. Is it leaking excessively, dumping out fluid? Anything underneath here, uh, burnt, damaged? You know, does anything look out of the ordinary or large amounts of fluid? Uh, there's some harnesses that run across there. Look for exposed wiring. So at this point, I said it's a visual inspection. That all looks like I am safe to operate. It's not drifting down or anything like that. So that's going to be good. And the other thing is very vital, important on these machines is here. You look underneath here, you see those little lines? That's our swing gear. That's the thing that this thing pivots on. And that's a very important piece because those teeth, that's what keeps it in mesh and in time. We're going to look at that. Make sure every tooth is there in the right shape. Uh, well, we're talking very low percentage of ever found those missing teeth, but that is a vital, very critical thing. So I want every single tooth accounted for before moving on. So this is say, I can see all those, those look good. So we're going to move our direction this way here. Now when it comes to wheels, tires and everything inside of the rim, look at it. It's just dry dust dirt in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're going to do the same thing to all four. Um, that's a visual inspection. So that's a quick cl clue. Is it oily? No, it's actually dry dirt. So I don't have any hub seals or brake leaks. So that's going to be a pass inspection. Now when it gets to the tires, now we have foam filled, we have solid. There's a couple different things to keep in mind. We like to mark our valve stems, makes a quick reference, foam filled, FF, self-explanatory. It says 80, 90, that's the air pressure that goes into the tires. Um, and when it comes to the tire, can't have any deep gouges. If there's, there's cords inside the tire, if the gouge is so deep, you can see the cords or some of them are cut, that tire needs replaced. Make notes on your little work order, hey, this tire's damaged. Lug nuts. Oh yeah. Yeah, JLG's guidelines, Dean says, treat it just like a pneumatic. So. Keep that in mind, right? All right, but lug nuts, not very often the same thing. All lug nuts need to be on there. I'm not gonna say anything, have to hand torque it, but visual inspection, are lug nuts intact? This has oil behind it. Any oil inside the rim? Nope. So this tire here, I don't see anything out of the ordinary, no oil, looks good. Work our way around the machine. I'm not gonna open the hood yet because we're gonna take a look here, back to the, where we call it, what is this piece here? The swing gear. Yep, we're gonna do the same thing. I can see it. This whole side, all those teeth are there and present. Look, kind of look inside there. And our other clues are, is there any puddles of oil on the ground? Anything puddling up anywhere? No, it's looking pretty good. Now we're on this side here. All of our equipment should have some kind of a data plate, kind of like a VIN tag on a car. That must be present. Um, if it's not, need to get one on ore. This tells a lot of things for vital, for stability, whatever thing. A lot of information, but how you want to look at it, must be on there. So that's something to keep in mind. So it's working our way this way. So we're gonna get to the hood. Now these hoods, they're plastic. They don't weigh a whole lot. You don't think much about it, right? These machines don't drive very fast. But one thing really to keep in mind, this goes on a delivery truck. You know how fast they drive? 70. You got it, 70. Hopefully no more than that, because I'm sure that's the posted speed limit. But anyway, um, they do drive at a higher rate of speed. So the hood must be latched. So give it a little tug. Uh, last thing I want is this hood flying off and transport. I'm not worried about so much of the job site, but getting to the job site, that hood, must be secured and latched for that reason alone. Pop open the hood, there's your power barn. This is where all the noise happens. This is what makes the thing go. Well, there's some things in here that I'm gonna look at before I put my butt in the air. Is there engine oil in it? Well, that's a vital piece of an engine that must be there. I already have a rag, self-explanatory. Most dipsticks are highlighted yellow, depending on the engines. There's multiple different engines, but for the most part, you're gonna find some kind of a dipstick. So before I even start the engine, I'm sure you're capable of checking oil level, but I'm going to check it. We're in our safe operating range, so it's okay for us to start. 
Um, now, some are water-cooled engines, so you're going to have a coolant reservoir. Take a look at that. There's your battery there. Grab the cables. Are they tight? Now, this is the engine tray. Looking for any excessive oil buildup, anything out of the ordinary, some kind of a telltale sign something is wrong. Well, this one's actually dry and clean. Same thing, engine block, nothing visibly out of the ordinary. Um, these generators like to fall off. Oh, inspect the bolts. Take a little quick look there. Is it falling off? Now we have harnesses and hoses and everything underneath here. Uh, make sure nothing's falling off or frayed. And when it comes to the pumps back here, we have function pumps. We have all the plumbing that goes to it. Now when it comes to hose inspection, this goes to any hose on the machine. We're going to look for any kind of exposed steel braiding. The rubber, eh, some minor cracking is probably acceptable, but if the steel is exposed, rusted, or broken strands, replace that hose. Must go. And of course, obviously, if it's leaking, it must be replaced. But it's anyway, we're going to look at this pump. It's actually very dry and clean. So this is going to pass a visual inspection. I'm okay to operate this. So now we've visually looked at all that. We're happy with all those components. I said everything under the hood, fluid levels, check every fluid level that you can. I said, unfortunately, we have a lot of different engine types but they all have oil and stuff. So check the fluids on that. So once we say, hey, clean bill of health under here, we'll just go ahead and shut the hood for now. And it's good practice probably just to latch it. Now we're gonna keep working our way forward. Now there's really not much to see here. We're gonna check decals. And I guess while we're gonna to touch on the subject of decals, they are on this machine from front to back, top to bottom, whichever way you think is forward or backwards, but they're everywhere on these machines. Like this one here, that word danger or warning, well clearly it's trying to send you a message. They must be legible and intact. So if you find a spot where there's a silhouette where a sticker used to be, you better do some homework and find out what's missing. It may have been washed off, fell off, or maybe it was the wrong sticker. But we need to make sure we get all the decals back in place and in the right location. Uh, all that stuff's available in the service manual. So if you have any questions or ask somebody. But that's it. We're all good here, working our way around. Now, when it comes to the front of the machine, same thing. Not a whole lot to look at here. Um, We'll reference our decals, but looking for any damage. We get down here to the front. Now, what's happening here, of course, is, is the steer axle. We've got quite a few things moving. Um, same thing, we'll look at the tire while we're down here. Any stuff inside the rim, we've already looked at the lug nuts and work our way across. Probably one of the biggest things that um, when it gets missed is this lower, it looks like a bronze color, or copper colored washer. That's a thrust it's washer. The axle that and the spindle so it doesn't go metal to metal and start chewing things up. Um, it costs us a costly repair. So visually verify that is there and intact, and there's a space. Now, there's a little difference in some of the uh, spindle types, but for the most part, they're all this style, a lower thrust washer. Is it split? Is it missing or worn paper thin? Time for replacement. So just visualize, hey, thrust washer good? Thrust washer good? Great. Now, I have seen these pins uh, fall out, bolt sheared off, or sometimes the pin seizes up and damages. So these should all have some kind of retainer or lock and a bolt. So all of them have that. Make sure they're all there and intact while we're down here. And then steer cylinders, looking for leaks. Nothing, looks good. Hoses, same thing, visual inspection, looks nice. Now what's that thing up there again? Uh, swing gear. Swing gear, very good. Same thing, I'm gonna side that right here while I'm down here. Looks pretty good to me. And something else doesn't happen very often. This is a big old heavy counterweight, right? There's bolts that attach it. One, two, on the bottom here. There's also two upside inside the hoods, but as for a visual, I like to look at these, make sure they're intact. Someone runs into this or they hit it hard enough, shears the bolt off. We have a few machines floating around that we come in for a check-in, we find them missing, take it off, remove the bolt, install a new bolt, no big deal. Not really horribly complicated to do. Now we also have cylinders on the axles, multiple types. That's an axle lockout cylinder. Same thing, looking for leaks. Is it there? Is it intact? Um, so both cylinders should be there, not leaking. So I'm gonna say that's good. Work our way to this side here. Do mm -hmm. they ever get crushed? Or... They do get damaged. Um, those are some of the ones on some of our equipment that you want to inspect. They'll rub on the tire. Same thing. And once it rubs to that rubber coating, start snapping the strands, and you have a potential leak. So, yes, inspect those hoses just like any other hose on the machine. Is it afraid? But these do get damaged. A good question because that's something that we do need to look at. So, um, again, we're going to work our way this way. Inside the rim is dry. Great. Inside the hub here, there's no oil building up in there. So at this point, this machine's looking pretty good. Um, Saying that we look at our tire, check for the same things we've looked for before. Um, the lug nuts are all there, no torque hub leak. That's great. Now something else, now JLG's changed it up a little bit, but I can still say for without a shadow of a doubt, capacity stickers, right? 
They should be visible from all control stations. That tells the operator how much weight can go in it. Now the world has changed a little bit. We've got load sense systems, so um, the computer's doing the thinking for us, takes it out of our hands. But for the most part, capacity stickers are a must and should be legible. Now you're gonna see on the platforms a few of them disappearing, and that's normal. But I know from the ground controls, that should still be there. Uh, and again, so you can see things like this, all the decals legible. There was something here at one time, but that's clearly not there anymore. But it's something, that, hey, let me ask some questions. What was there? I don't even know. That sticker doesn't belong. But there is an obvious note. Now, working our way over here. Now, here's something else to keep in mind. All of our machines, aerial equipment requires an annual inspection. We do those every, have anyone told you yet? Well, it would be once a year, but we actually do it 60 days prior to the last inspection. So this says 622. So when it comes up before 22, then well, we probably ought to start looking and doing the annual inspection. Um, but it is required, yes, every year. But since we're a high turn, things are moving quick. Um, sometimes we're on rent for a long time. We try to do them. Our window is 60 days or less. We go ahead and knock out that annual inspection. This is a, just a quick reference. When you get inside the computer, you'll actually see where to look all that up at and verify it's been done. Because I got something else we're going to show you in the platform. Now, while we're down here, same thing, looking inside here, there's a swivel coupler, any oil running down, but typically my clue is there's a puddle on the ground. Um, and then what's last but not least, our favorite thing here? Swing gear. swing gear. I can see all these teeth. Now, this is the gear, the pinion. That's what drives on the swing gear. You want to visually make sure all the teeth are there on it too. And if this is leaking, normally there's oil all running down the frame, that swing hub. So this one looks pretty good. And now we've verified that is good. We'll go ahead and open up the hood here for the hydraulic side of the machine. Same thing. Is the hood latched secure and tight? Uh, yep. So go ahead and take a peek under here. Now, start either way. There's a turntable lock pin. This is what you use typically for transport or if there's a malfunction. That pin, oh, I don't actually take it out and actually just throw it through the platform, but make sure it wiggles. They say they're long if they crowd up and get jammed up. And if you had to use that and it seized, well, that's epic fail. Um, auxiliary pump motor, this is what gets you out of the air in case you have an engine failure or power failure of some sort. This is what's gonna get you out of the sky. I'll show you how to check that. Um, swing motor, make sure the bolts are secure and tight. Um, these do have a tendency, everyone's a great while, to work loose. Um, so last thing you want, that's the whole thing, that keeps it in mesh. And that's one heck of a ride when the thing comes disengaged and I want no part of that ride. So, And nor do anybody operating you or end user um, this is our valve block. This is what runs all of our functions. Now, I've had this happen before. Checked in a machine, performed fantastically, went to the job site, and as soon as I got there, did no longer steer. The coil plug fell off in transport. Only because I, the screw must have been stripped out. I don't know the exact stories, but from that point on, I said, fine, just give these things a little bump, a little twist. They're not falling off. I'm going to give that a clean bill of health. Same thing. A little bit of visual inspection, but we're not doing anything out of the ordinary that I think you need safety tools or anything special. But Bunch of hoses in here. Look at those. There's any oil puddling up on the tray. Looks pretty dry and clean to me, so I'm gonna call that good. I'm gonna keep working this way. Hydraulic sight glass. The boom is in the air, so it's gonna come up some, but we're definitely not low, uh, but it should be between the two marks. Now, same thing, when I bring that boom down here in a minute, it's gonna come up some, but that's gonna be safe to operate. Uh, do I have fuel inside the tank? Can't always visually tell, but this one is full. Again, that needs to be filled before it goes on rent because well, that's the that's what keeps the customer moving. Uh, now we're gonna get here to the ground controls. Now on here, first hour meter, oil change interval. This will actually show the hours. Uh, we do ours every 12 months or by the hours, uh, depending on what it says here. So this must be legible, but verify that you know it has been less than 12 months. Then if not, we'll go ahead and service the engine while we have it in part of our, basically our inspection. This one here, by the hours, we're good. We'll have to check the date when we get inside. Now, when it gets to the ground control station, I'm gonna shut the hood here. I'll show you how to do this. We're gonna do a couple functions to get the basket out of the air here. So, to operate the ground controls, you read picture fluently? I do. Good, great, we'll be off a great start. So obviously, each function is labeled by picture. Um, now, what I'll go ahead and do is, I'm gonna pull the e-stop on. There's that auxiliary pump motor. One, I'm gonna make sure it works because if we go in the air here after a bit do our actual function test, and have a malfunction, I'll make sure I get out of the air, right? That's important because I don't think I wanna try to climb down. Boom is moving, auxiliary is good. So now what I'm going to do now is basically go through each function on the ground controls. I'm not just going to power it up and bring it down. I want to do every function. That's going to tell me a lot of information. One, it's going to tell me the cylinders, 
the solenoids, the wiring, and the hydraulics are all good. Same thing, if something malfunctions in the air, they can get me down. So that's important to me, but it's also very important information when you go do your checking from the platform. Let's say main boom works down here, but doesn't work up there. Where's the problem most likely at then? If it all works good down here, Between. right? So don't start tearing into here trying to find the problem. You know it's gotta be something up there or vice versa. It tells you a lot about the condition of the machine. So same thing, fire it up. And if you watch, I'm gonna go ahead and do each function. We're gonna do basket rotate left and right. Just make sure, you don't have to go full swing. Just make sure I get both directions. Same thing, basket level down, basket level up, telescope out, and then back in. And then of course we know it boomed up earlier, but we're going up anyway, then down. And when I get it, I'm gonna stop from almost all the way down. I'm gonna show you some things on the basket. I'll go ahead and swing left and right just to get all the functions. Okay. Now, we're going to continue here. Same thing. What am I looking at further on the wheel? Gashes, okay. My tire looks pretty good. And what about inside the rim? Uh, no oil. All the lug nuts are there. Yep. And, of course, same thing on the back side. Any oil buildup, any cuts, tears, or anything. And even look up underneath the axle on the ground. Anything puddling up? No. I'm going to give that a clean bill of health. Now, when we get to the platform, now this is a little bit of retracing. I'm trying to preach the one loop around technique, but there's something I want you to see. And I wanted to stop here at this point, but this is part of your check and you can do it however you want. But this basket, JLG, um, gives you inspection guidelines in their manual. Uh, it says basically if anything from the floor, this ring here up, we are allowed to repair by their guidelines. There's a repair procedure replacing handrail sections. But when it comes to this bottom ring, if it is Damage in any way, unless defined damage, rust, severely dented, um, let's see, let's say cut or pierced from something. If it's damaged, it actually is required replacement. We do not repair the lower hoop. But that also doesn't mean if it's damaged, you let it go. If it's damaged, we must replace the entire platform. Only when it comes to the bottom hoop. So anything up, like I said, we can fix anything up here within reason. If it gets pretty twisted, come find your lead tech or visit with them. Now the platform support, the reason I left it in here is I wanted to show you underneath so we can kind of take a peek under here. So poke your head, same thing. We're gonna look at that whole thing. We're gonna walk around the whole thing. Is there any holes, any damages? In this case, I think this one is okay. But something else we've been seeing is this platform support. As you can tell, it bolts onto the basket and bolts onto the boom. That's what's holding everything up. So that's obviously a very important component. We have seen now with age, it's because of use and wear, they've actually rubbed through or they've actually rusted through on some of them, or it's been dented or kinked. So in that case, in those three scenarios, what do we do with that piece? You got to replace it. It must be replaced. Um, so let's say, but if we're putting this thing all the way on the ground, we're not putting eyes on that. We need to look at this bottom hoop and look at this. I said, again, you can do it however you want. You can bring the boom all the way down and take it in the shop and look at it. But I just want to make it clear to you and viewers, this is important components that need a visual look before we pass it for an inspection or even let us operate it in the air. So I'm gonna say this one's good. So we're gonna bring it the rest of the way down and continue our inspection this way. All right, so now, when it comes to the moving parts here, power track, power track support, and push tube, okay? Now the power track obviously flexes, it goes in and out. So all these links must work smooth and even and nice. So they can't be bent, it should be in a nice straight line and obviously no additional hardware or screws put through it or any kind of damage. Now inside of here, of course, you've got hoses and harnesses, you've got electrical signals going up and plumbing going up and down. Now with that being said, same as any hose inspection, you have to leak scab replaced. The only thing in the case of inside the power track, no splices. Obviously a splice, you're going to crimp ends on ends, makes a rigid section too long, it doesn't flex very good, rubs on the other hoses, and you have other failures. So sometimes in a pinch in the field, they have to do a splice just to get it off the job site. But when it comes back through the shop, replace that hose cannot have splices in the power track same thing metal showing on the hose or phrase must be replaced and the push tube support uh, preferably zero dents or damage or anything so any kind of dings or dents let's make notes and we'll determine whether it's customer damage or not now as for the push tube this is what actually supports the weight of this power track when it's extended all the way out so it has a shape that is square clearly but also that gives it structure and strength so there's a big old kink or a dent in the side of it one, it causes a misalignment, but also potential for buckling. Heck of a mess. Use hydraulic oil. Sometimes it won't operate, get the operator back down to the ground. So, it can't be kinked or damaged for many reasons. Loses structure, potential failure. 
And then the other thing I'll show you, when it comes out here, this thing is actually bulged out wider. As the operator telescopes it out, when it hits here, it actually makes the platform bounce. Um, so it makes someone maybe feel uneasy. So it has to move through this block smooth. So if it's kinked or damaged, it must be replaced. And if it is customer damage, that's a whole other story for another day. So now we've worked our way this direction. Now when we get up here to the platform, we talked about the support a little bit, but it's attached to a platform rotator. Check the hoses, they secure tight, no leakage, no leakage. But see these eight bolts here? I want you to see them, but I also want you to put your finger on them uh, and make sure they are intact. I can tell you right now, so many machines, you take this basket, hit it hard enough, of course, like a shear, it pops all the bolts. But sometimes the bolts stay right in place, so it visibly looks correct. So they will shear off. Sometimes they fall out, but sometimes they don't. I want you to definitely put your eyes in it. Maybe even give them a little touch on all those. And some booms have covers over them. Either take that cover off or peel it back. And I want you to put your hands on or look at those bolts every time. Um, that's what keeps it in time. You're not going to fall off, but it keeps it from swinging too far underneath the boom and causing other issues. Or unintentional motion. Uh, that's the last thing you want in the air. 60 feet, 80 feet, or 185 feet. You don't want to be going, wee. No, exactly. Um, now when it gets that, we'll work our way this direction. We're going to look at all the handrails visibly, any broken welds, cracks, major kinks, or sometimes the operator cuts through the rail because they're cutting something and they just go ahead and saw our rails in half. It happens. Inspect them end for end. This is what you're leaning against when you're in the air. You should be lanyarded off, but the last thing you want is a break or unintentional motion and fall over the rail. Um, but when it comes to the control boxes, it's all secure and tight. Hinges are still here. Quick reference sometimes, I just grab the controllers and if the box is secure, I'm going to call it good. If the lid is wiggling around, investigate the why. Um, then we're going to work our way around to this side. We're just about done for our visual. Still sighting all the handrails looking at it. Um, looks pretty good. Now we're talking about capacity decals. It used to be all of them had an entry points and control services. But you'll see some of the new booms that's going away now. Um, gates. Everything has to have a gate. All of our booms do for the most part. Some have that sliding guillotine gate, but whatever. Should be a self-closing or spring-loaded hinges on most of it, but the latch, no matter how it goes, self-closing or not, the latch needs the latch. So it does. So next thing, last but not least, before we put ourselves in the air, we're getting about to the end. You're going to step up here. I'm not going to do any function testing because we aren't harnessed up, but look at everything. Does it look like it's safe to operate on the switches, the controls, all there? Nothing's broke off or missing. Yep. And here's the last bits here. It was very, very critical and important. Inside the manual box should be a few things. The correct operator's manual for the machine. This is a 600S. There are serial number breaks, preferably in English. I don't know if it's required in English, but I've seen a few in different languages, but preferably in English. And then matching your model, you have your ANSI book, and then a current annual inspection. The legit, properly filled out, up-to-date annual inspection form should be in the manual box, preferably in a plastic bag to prolong the life of them. Because, well, you know, the last thing you want to do is open a soggy manual and it's stuck together. So... That's going to be calling it good. So at this point, that's all I want to cover. One loop around the machine, cover all the visuals, operate from the ground, and really the next thing is for harness up and do an actual function test. But uh, I think that pretty much covers it. Of course, the one thing else I should say, anything that I've covered doesn't override what is written in the factory maintenance and service manuals. This is just kind of our quick tip, but whatever that book says, the manufacturers, that takes precedence over anything. So. I should pretty much wrap us up. So I hope that helps you out. It's kind of a quick walk around. I said quick, but you get the idea. It worked out pretty nice. And of course, uh, we'll be doing some videos on how to do the actual proper check-in here soon. So stay tuned.